All right, so we've learned how to run JavaScript in our web browser, how to do events and functions, how to interact with our document, to change content and style and add events and stuff like that. And we've studied some data types now, the number data type and the string data type. Now we need a place to store our data, okay, and get input from the user. And once we get input from the user, we can store it in something called a variable. So variables are used to store data. So we'll go through this. Um, some of the key things to do with variables are we need to declare a variable. It just tells JavaScript, hey, I want you to save some memory, some storage for um, me to store some stuff in, and we're going to call that storage age or whatever you want it to be called. We need to assign data to the variable to say, hey, now store this number inside of that variable or string, whatever you want. Let's use the variable, right? When I use the variable name, it'll now print out what's stored inside of that variable. And we can reassign, say, now I want you to store this 16 inside of that age and print it out. Okay, to, to go over some of the basics here, I want to pop over to the board here and just kind of visualize what happens here. So the first thing we did was to um, declare a variable, right? So if I want to declare a variable, we use the keyword let, and then we give it a name let age and what that kind of does is i imagine this as there's some sort of a container and we've named this container age awesome it's currently empty we just declared javascript says okay i've got a, some space here it's uh, its name is age but there's nothing in it in fact it's undefined i'll show you when we get back to the console or the computer we'll print it out and you'll see it's it's uh, undefined um, so we need to define it or assign, right? We're going to assign a value to it. So we use the name of the variable, age, the equal sign, which in JavaScript is the assignment operator. It says, take this variable age and assign it the value of 15, right? Or give it the value of 15. That's the assignment operator, that equal sign. So now, this container has the value 15 inside of it, right? So I can use this variable now, right? I can look up its contents. If I were to go console.log, and we've always just put strings in here, or we could put a number in here, but now I'm going to put in the variable name age. And when JavaScript sees the, the variable name age, it says, okay, there's no quotations around this. Right? If there were quotations around it, then it would think of it as a string and it would actually print out the word age. But without the quotations, it says, hey, this must be a variable. I'm going to look up its value and it finds the value 15 and it'll put that into the console. Okay? We can also um, reassign. Right? Um, I can say, hey, let's take the variable age and it's currently storing 15. Let's assign it the value 16. And what that does is do I have, I don't use this very often. I have to learn how to use this. Where's my eraser? Oh, eraser. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to erase that. And we're going to put inside of here now 16, right? It just says in my memory, I'm now going to place 16, whatever was there before, gone. Okay, so we declare variables, we assign variables, we can use those variables and we can reassign them. Um, these two steps, let me get a green here. These two steps here, declare and assign, um, are often done in one step, um, in one line of code where you can go let age be assigned 15. Right? It says, hey, JavaScript, declare a variable called age and assign the value 15. So it just, it's common to do that all in one step, because usually when you create a variable, you want to initialize it right away. Okay, that hopefully helps you understand. Think of these variables as, as containers, right? Containers to store your data. Okay, good stuff. All right, let's go back to the notes here. So like I said, declare, assign, use the variable, reassign it, do it in one line. Um, now, you can pick whatever name you want, 
but there are some rules and conventions, some things you're not allowed to do, but some that are just kind of generally good practice. So usually we begin variable names with a lowercase letter. Okay, so start with a lowercase letter. Don't start with a number. Um, you can only use letters, lower and uppercase letters, numbers and underscores, right? No spaces allowed, no question marks or exclamation marks, just letters, numbers, and underscores. If you have a descriptive variable with multiple words, use camel casing. Oh, I spelled that wrong, I'll have to fix that. Use cane casing. Camel casing, um, so my, and then the new word will start with an uppercase, camel, new word, case, new word, variable. Every new word starts with a uppercase. Okay, no spaces allowed. Um, that's kind of the standard for JavaScript. You want to make your variable names intuitive, right? They should describe what they store. Don't call this let A be assigned 15. A could be age, it could be acceleration, it could be apples, it could be who knows, right? So make them descriptive. And you're not allowed to use reserved words, right? JavaScript has some special words like let. You can't have a variable called let. Um, don't use function, right? Because that's a special word. Alert is a special function. You can't have a variable called alert because it'll mess up with what those um, commands do. Okay, um, let's play, let's, let's make a new program and play around with variables a little bit, and then we'll learn about input. Um, and we'll add some, some input, get an input from the user in our program. I'm gonna go to my F drive, my CS10 folder, JS programming. I'm gonna make a whole new project here Let's call it uh, variables-input, exciting name. I don't know, like we'll just play around with this a little bit. It doesn't have a super purpose to it. I'm gonna right click and open with code and did it on the other thing here again. Okay, so there's my empty project folder. We need our index.html and we'll need a main.js. My index.html, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to web dev here, HTML basics, that page structure, and just hit, con whoa, not control A, I'm going to copy and paste that into here to have my basic page structure. I still haven't figured out how to make that my default to have two spaces, shift alt F to format it, beautiful. We'll give it a title, sure, why not? Variables and input. And we'll give this an H1, variables and input. And I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, so we'll just leave that blank. But I do know I wanna load some JavaScript. So I will do a script tag where the source is equal to main.js. Okay, so in this main.js, we can now start programming variables and input. And maybe just to make sure this is working, let's just do a console.log hi. So we'll go here and we'll go live. You know what? I think when I load a project, live server loads. When I make a new one from scratch, it doesn't. But we can right click and go open with live server. Okay, here it is. Open my console. It said hi. Okay, good. So the script is running. Things are set up. I'm ready to do stuff with variables. All right, let's try something like this. Let's make a variable. Let first name. Notice the camel casing, right? First and then the second word is name, so I make it a capital. Let first name be assigned. Um, I'm going to make it a string, so quotes. Single or double quotes. Um, let first name be assigned Colin. That's me. Let last name be assigned Veldkamp, wonderful. And then I'm gonna make another variable called let full name be assigned, first name plus a space, let's be consistent, use single quotes, um, plus last name. All right, so here I'm declaring a variable and assigning it a value. I'm declaring another variable and assigning it a value. I'm declaring another variable and assigning it a value, but to, the value is gonna be made up of, right, I'm using these two variables here, and I'm adding those strings together to create a full name. Okay, 
And let's do, I could do some sort of a message, console.log. Um, hello, oh, let's be consistent again. Hello, the single quotes are just easier to type. I don't have to hit shift, but I'm still used to doing it for some reason. Hello plus um, full name plus a period. Um, your surname is last name plus and your first name is this is like the most useless program <laughs> anyway first name is first name plus a period okay and notice how I don't know if I've shown you this yet but notice how it's wrapping to the next line um, as the text gets longer, right, it wraps. You can do that under settings. Um, settings and just search for word wrap. I think I showed this and turn that on. Okay, so let's save this and hopefully now, hello Colin Velkamp, your surname is Velkamp and your first name is Colin. Beautiful. So just showing you how you can, you can get these things together get these variables, they're storing values, you can use those variables to create a big string and print it out. Super exciting. Okay, um, you know what, I'm gonna leave, is there anything else we could do? Well, I can show you reassign maybe. Let's last name be assigned um, uh, Smith, so original. And now when we print this out, this last name Velcamp was kind of useless to do that because we've changed it. And now you'll see, oh, oh, I see. Actually, that's cool. I'm glad I made this error. So on line seven, line seven right here, the new line of code I wrote, it says, um, uncaught syntax error identifier last name has already been declared, right? I already did let last name be assigned Velcamp. I've declared a variable called last name and now I'm going let last name again. I don't need to declare it again. If I want to reassign the variable to something new, I just need to use the name of the variable and then the assignment operator. I don't want to use let. And again, I'm glad it gave me that error message, but I should get into the habit of doing that use strict. Because sometimes it doesn't give you stuff. So hello, Colin Velkamp. Your surname is Smith and your first name is Colin. So you'll see it still used the last name variable here for my full name. It turned it to Velcamp, right? Hello, Colin Velcamp. But then I, when I changed my last name variable to Smith, I didn't redo. So I guess I should have done this. Full name is assigned first name plus space, oops, plus last name to update the full name as well. And now it'll have that updated too. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I'm running out of time. In the next video, we'll start talking about, um, where do we go? Back to intro to programming, variables and input. Hopefully that's a good introduction to variables. We'll start talking about inputs now, right? So we can get input from the user and store it in our variables. Instead of just making up names, I can ask the user for their name. We'll do that in the next video. Hope this made sense so far. And uh, yeah, take care and we'll see you.